So many great fights. I'm pushing. I'm for you. How many? How many? <laughs> you know what I mean? Rhode Island, that's your way. It's like Vinny Paz. You know what I mean, I, I remember reading an interview. Like you used to come in, into the into the uh, into the ring with like the rocky shorts. And I remember uh, in the ring magazine. I can't remember what year it was, but it was uh, one of the anniversary of the Rocky and Carl Weathers, Apollo Creed yes, came yes. to you and said, "Vinny, Pazzi, <laughs> Vinny, remember that? Yeah. Vinny Pazzi ends, and you went nuts. He said, look at this guy coming and saying he's saying he's, he's talking to me." He said, "Vinny, I'm Carl Weathers." I said, "Man, don't introduce yourself to me." I said. Matter of fact, I started boxing because I liked you, not even him. And Rocky Sylvester Stone yeah, was yeah. right there. It was pretty funny. But I retired with 50 wins, five world titles, and a couple of brain cells left. So I'm good. <laughs> if we flip the page, when you uh, when you was um, lightweight champ, and then you had the rubber match fight with Greg Hogan, and you surprised everybody in that fight because this is like. You was on your toes and you boxed. I remember the the, ports, the, the sports commentators turning around and saying, "Look, this the Vinny Paz who used to be like blood, sweat, and tears, turned into Willie Pep that night." Do you remember that? You turned into you see that you turned into historian, my friend. You turned into Willie Pep that night. You're good. This guy's good. You hear me? You turned into you turned into Willie Pep that night, and he's on your toes, boxing, boxing. Greg Hogan was really hurt because Greg came in and he thought, right, I'm gonna fight. Watch, I'm gonna fight you, and you just turned on the skills. Then you flip the page when you won the W when you was out through injury, and he moves straight up to to junior middle. We call it light middle, nigga, to junior middle, and you became world champion. What happened? Why did you give up the title? They made me. I didn't want to. My, my promoters made me. They talked me into it because it was going to cost them too much money. So I kind of got screwed. That's another story. But we're working on the movie of my life story now, that, that period of time when I broke my neck. So it'll be, it'll be on a big screen soon. It's, it's who, who, Who's going to play you? Who's going to play you? Brad Pitt? Do you know? <laughs> Do you know the, the Godfather actor James Kahn? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, James Kahn is gonna He's play too old my to dad. Play you. Yeah. Gonna, gonna play, play my your dad. dad. And his kid, Scotty Kahn, is gonna play me. He's right. got a kid in Ocean's Eleven now. He's usually a hot actor. He's, he's getting making a name for himself, and he can fight too, little guy. So it looks like Scotty Kahn and his dad, James Kahn, are gonna play me and my dad. Okay. When you wanted, when you won a junior um, middleweight world title, that night. You you right, boxed so kind of like Pernod Whitaker. That, that was the greatest night. That, that you boxed Best superb. Fight of my life. That, I, you, I'm telling you, bro, man, you boxed superb in that fight. I remember watching that fight and saying there was a bit of Perno in you there. And I know, like at that time, you like, you was all like in the Lou Duva camp. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and that. How many, did you spar a lot with Perno and Murdoch Taylor? No, no. They didn't like spar with me because I used to go hard. <laughs> they didn't like. They used to go easy. They were very good fighters, very defensive fighters. So they didn't like any. Put the heat on them. But I was in the training camp with them. But no, I, I for that fight I just knew that delay was a big punch. Gilbert Delay for the WBA Junior Middleweight title. Delay was a big strong guy. Very, very strong undefeated guy. Undefeated in from 30 France. fights from France. Tall, gangly kind yeah. of fire. So I knew to beat him, like, to win, that I had to box and move him. And in the end, I knew I'd end up beating the puncher, and I was. I stopped him in the 12th round. And as funny as this is, I'm going to give you a little history now. How ironic, how crazy life is. When I was an amateur fighter, the Duvis took me. They were trying to turn me pro. They took me to Madison Square Garden to see a fight. And it was Roberto Duran versus Davey Moore. So I was sitting there watching, going, wow, look at this guy, Roberto Duran. My God, he's an animal. This is unbelievable. It's awesome. He wins the title. He becomes the first fighter in the history of boxing to go from lightweight to junior middleweight and win world titles. Who would have ever thought, in a million years, I would have thought I became the second fighter to do that. And, and then who would have ever thought in a million years that I would end up fighting Roberto Duran after that twice? <laughs> you know, but um, it, it's just ironic how things happen. When I when I fought Duran, that's why I don't even I don't even count them. There were two wins, they were cool. So, but I just gave him his award when he, he got inducted into the Hall of Fame. I handed it to him, and I told the people, I said, you know what? I, said, I beat Duran twice we fought. I said, but it don't even count because he was 90 when I fought him. I said he's older than he is now. <laughs> Everybody start cracking up. Right, Vin. Also, like if you look on like the fights that you had, I remember. 
luckily yesterday we speak to Mike McCallum. Yeah, I mean, oh, ran, ran to Mike McCallum, and I remember Mike McCallum's fight with Donald Curry in 1987. Man, he was, yeah, my, right. he was my roommate. In yeah, I, I know, I know. When you, the yeah, with the yeah. Divas, and uh, you had Shelly Finkel as well. And I remember seeing you at the fight. He was in a, he was in a, in a, in a, in, a, in like a, a really flashy suit, like a, a wedding suit. No, me yeah, flashy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, you just yeah, try to be a bit, a bit understated. Yeah, and uh, I remember you sitting there and going nuts at ringside. Um, watching Mike McCullum, do you actually understand the impact that Mike McCullum had on his little island of Jamaica? No, no, I don't because I, I, I know it was bigger. I knew it was big, but it was bigger than I even thought. And, and I, I like Mike. He's a good man, good guy, and a great fighter at the time. Mike Van Callen was a great fighter. Super, super, super fighter. Ben, it's been a pleasure to talk to you forever and ever. You're good, man. Thank you very much. This guy's good.